So here is a Coulomb's law problem. We're given three charges that are arranged on um, an XY axis, uh, a negative three nano Coulomb charge. So I'm going to put a negative here to indicate he's negative. Uh, a five nano Coulomb charge, which is positive. Um, if it doesn't state negative, then it's positive. And then a six nano Coulomb charge, which is positive. So I'm going to go ahead and number these charges. We're going to call the, uh, this guy here Q1. Uh, this guy here is going to be Q2. And this guy will be Q3, just so we can talk about these charges. Charge 1, charge 2, charge 3. Um, all right, so the first question is to solve for the net force, the total force acting on the 5 nano coulomb charge. So we're focusing here <clears throat> on the charge at the origin. Uh, and then I also want, I just want to point out that in Coulomb's law, uh, Q is charge and it's absolute valued. And the reason for this is because uh, the equation is not, this equation here is not going to tell us the direction of the force on the charge being focused on. Um, there's no way to determine that the force would be to the left or to the right or up or down simply from the equation. So when we plug into this equation, we're just plugging in the absolute value of the charges. To figure out the direction of the force, which is what plus and minus is in physics, um, <clears throat> to figure out the direction, we have to look at the situation. So focusing on the 5 nano coulomb charge, um, charge 1 is negative and charge 2 is positive and opposites attract. So the 5 nano coulomb charge is being pulled down uh, towards Q1. And uh, charge 3 is positive and charge 2 is positive. So these, these two, charge 2 and 3, are going to repel. So that's going to be a force to the left. So um, I'm going to do this over here. So this is basically a free body diagram. So we're doing a free body diagram for Q2, for the charge at the origin. So here's Q2. <clears throat> we have um, F, we're going to label this F23, which means the force on 2 by 3. And then we have F21, meaning the force on charge 2 from charge 1. So now what we do is we're going to use Coulomb's law to figure out what these forces are. What is F23 and what is F21? <clears throat> All right, so F23, so we're going to go K, Q2, Q3, because we're using 2 and 3, over R squared. So K is 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared over Coulomb squared. Uh, Q2, now here, so Q2 is 5 nano coulombs. We're going to punch this in as 5 times 10 to the negative 9 coulombs. Nano is 10 to the negative 9. So Q2 is 5 times 10 to the negative 9. Q3, we're going to punch this in as 6 times 10 to the negative 9. And then the distance between is 0.3 meters. So F23 comes out as 3 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons. So if you look at the units here, so this coulomb squared right here cancels with these coulombs. Coulomb, cou coulomb times coulomb is coulomb squared, and that cancels with uh, the denominator of coulomb's constant. And then, um, <clears throat> oh, th I'm sorry, this should be squared right here, 0.3 meters squared. Uh, so then we have meter squared, and that's going to cancel with this meter squared, and we're left with Newton. All right, so, so we now have F23. That's 3 times 10 to the negative 6 Newtons. Okay, finding F21 is the same thing. So F21 is going to be K, Q2, Q1 over R squared. So we go 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared over Coulomb squared. <clears throat> Q2 is 5 times 10 to the negative 9. 
and then Q1, we plug in the absolute value, is 3 times 10 to the negative 9. And then the distance between charge 2 and charge 1 is 0 0.1 meter, and then we square it. So this gives F21 as 1.35 times 10 to the negative 5. 1.35 times 10 to the negative 5. So, uh, to find the net force, I'm going to clean this up. To find the net force acting on Q2, uh, what we have to do to these two vectors, so we, we've figured out F23 and F21. <clears throat> the way we add vectors is by placing them tip to tail. So F23, F21. Now notice I made F21 a lot bigger. <clears throat> 10 to the negative fifth is bigger than 10 to the negative six. So I just made that a longer vector. Uh, the answer that we're looking for, so I'll do this in red, the answer we're looking for is this hypotenuse. So what we're going to do is Pythagorean theorem. F23 is 3 times 10 to the negative 6. F21 is 1.35 times 10 to the negative 5. Uh, I'm going to let you do this on your calculator, but basically we do this squared plus this squared equals the hypotenuse squared. It's just Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You do Pythagorean theorem and you get 1.38 times 10 to the negative fifth newtons, which is the net force. Um, that is the red vector here. Uh, the other part of the answer which you need to include is the direction of the force. Uh, vectors always include a direction. So to find this theta, we could do uh, tangent inverse uh, F21, which is 1.35. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. Uh, opposite theta is the 1.35 times 10 to the negative fifth. And then adjacent is 3 times 10 to the negative six. So you punch that in, and you get an angle of 77.5. <clears throat> And we would want to call this, so th this is directed uh, this way, um, where this is, well, that's not very accurate. That's 77 degrees. So you're going to express this as 77.5 degrees below the negative x-axis. So the total answer is 1.38 times 10 to the negative fifth newtons, 77.5 uh, degrees below the negative x-axis. Okay, the second question is definitely um, a trickier question. It's not trickier uh, because of Coulomb's law. There's really nothing different about calculating the forces. But what's going to happen is uh, it's going to become more of a vector problem. We're going to have to break um, the forces that we solve for into x component, y component. All right, so in, in question two, we're now focusing on the negative 3 nanocoulomb charge. We're focusing on uh, this charge here that I've labeled Q1. All right, so let's start by looking at the, the direction of the forces. Remember, the equation is not going to tell you the direction of the force, which is why the Qs are absolute valued in that equation. Um, so to figure out the force, we've got to look at the situation. Um, so looking at Q1 and Q2, uh, charge 2 is attracting charge 1. So this is F12. Charge 1 is being attracted by charge 2 because opposites attract. Same thing for charge 3. Charge 1 is, is, a, is being attracted by charge 3. This is F13. Um, one thing we're going to need to solve for is uh, the distance between charge 1 and charge 3. We're going to need to know how far this is. And the way we do this is, <clears throat> is with Pythagorean theorem. We have a triangle here. 
So what we're going to say is uh, 0.1 squared plus 0.3 squared, so th those are the sides of the triangle, is going to be equal to this hypotenuse squared. So you solve this equation and we get the distance between charge 1 and charge 3 as uh, 0 0.3162. Uh, we're going to use that in a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to do the free body diagram again. The free body diagram for Q1, for the negative charge. So it's the same thing I have already. So we have F12 pointing straight up. And then we have F13 at an angle. F13. Three. Okay, so the thing that makes this problem a little more tricky is that we're going to have to break F13 into components. Oh, and the other thing we're going to need is this angle uh, here. So I'm going to draw just a reference line. Um, we're going to need to know what this angle is right there, which is the same as the angle up here. Um, the way we're going to get this angle, uh, and the reason we need this angle is to break F13 into components. So, so the theta that I just put on the free body diagram here is the same theta from down here, which is the same theta up here. So the way we get this theta is we just go tangent inverse um, opposite, which is 0.1, over adjacent, which is 0.3, and theta comes out as 18.43 degrees. So we now know that this theta right here is 18.43 degrees. All right, so what we need to do now is we gotta find these forces, F12 and F13. <clears throat> and the way we find those forces is with Coulomb's law. So F12, you know, we're gonna go K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. So this is gonna be nine times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared, Coulomb squared. Q1 is 3 times 10 to the negative 9. And then Q2 is 5 times 10 to the negative 9. All right, and then we divide this by the distance in between squared. So that's 0 0.1 meter squared. And then F12 comes out as 1.35 times 10 to the negative fifth newtons. All right, solving for F13. So now we're solving for this other force. So F13, um, we're going to go K, absolute value, Q1, Q3, over R squared. So K is 9 times 10 to the 9th. Uh, Q1 is 3 times 10 to the negative 9. And then Q3 is um, 6 times 10 to the negative 9. Okay, now here we're going to use the distance between 1 and 3, um, <clears throat> which we've already found. It's 0 0.3162, the distance between charge 1 and charge 3, 0 0.3162, and we square it. So this gives F13 as uh, you punch this into your calculator we get 1.62 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, so we now have F13, 1.62 times 10 to the negative 6. F12, 1.35 times 10 to the negative 5. So from here, uh, what we're trying to do is find the net force we're trying to find the net force on Q1, which basically means that we're gonna, we need to simplify F12 and F13 into one single force, which is going to be some force in the middle. It's going to be pointing that way, like that. Um, so to do this, <clears throat> what we have to do, for starters, is break F13 into components. So let's do this in red. So F13, oops, I want red. 
So F13 has X component and Y component. Um, so I'm going to get rid of this. So we know that this angle is 18.43 degrees. So breaking this into components. So this X component right here, so this is the X component of F13. Fx is going to be cosine of 18.43 degrees uh, times 1.62 times 10 to the negative 6. So the x component of F13 is 1.5369 times 10 to the negative 6. This y component right here, Fy, is going to be sine of 18.43 times 1.62 times 10 to the negative 6 which gives us a Y component of 5.122 times 10 to the negative 7. Okay, so to figure out the net force on the charge, we need to, to add up all the Y components to get total Y. So let's go back to black here. So summing up all the y forces so we have we have uh, two y forces we have this as a y force and we have this as a y force and they're both up meaning they're both positive we add these together and our total y force is 5 is going to be coming in. This will be perfect timing. Uh, Newtons. So this is our total Y force. We added the two Y's together and we only have one X force. The only X force that we have in this problem is this, the X component of F13. So that is uh, 1.5369 times 10 to the negative 6. So what we do now is we put our total x, which is going to be small, right? 10 to the negative 6 is 10 times smaller than 10 to the negative 5. So it's going to be like this. So our, our x force is the 1.5369 times 10 to the negative 6. Our y force is 1.4012 times 10 to the negative 5th. <clears throat> the answer that we're looking for, we'll do this in red, the answer that we're looking for is this hypotenuse. So you do Pythagorean theorem. You're going to do 1.5 times 10 to the negative 6 squared plus 1.4 times 10 to the negative 5th squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Uh, solving for the hypotenuse, we get 1.41. This hypotenuse comes out as 1.41 times 10 to the negative fifth newtons. That's right up here. 1.41 1, 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. And then <clears throat> you also have to calculate this angle, and you can do that with inverse tangent. Uh, inverse tangent opposite over adjacent, and it comes out as uh, 83.7 degrees. Uh, and I would just say above the positive x-axis. You know, it's pointing... Uh, our force is pointing this way, which is above the x-axis.